Hi friends, welcome to EduTab. So welcome to the Target NABARD Grade A and B 2019 5 MCQs a day series. Every day we discuss 5 MCQs, we discuss the concepts behind those MCQs. Plus we also tell you the relevance of these MCQs. Now today it is lecture number 19. So we know that the NABAR grade A and B 2019 notification is out. The NABAR grade A exam will be held on 15th and 16th of June 2019, NABAR grade B on 16th of June 2019. The online registrations have begun, so please fill the form ASAP, five more days to go. So the last date is 26th of May 2019. So there are eight vacancies released for grade B and 79 vacancies for grade A. We have had some excellent results previously and EduTap has performed well. Nabat graded 11 selections in 2017 and 26 selections in the year 2018. We offer the courses for NABAR 2019, so you can have a look at the courses that are there. So there are courses separately only for NABAR grade A as well. And if in case you have already taken our RBI course, then you can offer ARD course separately, Agriculture and Rural Development. And in case you want to prepare for both grade A and grade B, you can go for NABAR grade B uh, plus grade A course where you will get phase 1 mock test plus phase 2 full video course and in case you have already taken a bad grade A and you have to prepare or you want to prepare for grade B then you can take the last course where we will give you only the paper 3 right so if you want to avail the discount that we are offering that is 20 percentage you can use the code NABAR20 now these are the combo courses that we offer and to avail the discount of 30 percentage you can use the coupon code COMBO30 to avail the same so friends, we also offer individual courses, which is RBI Grade B, SEBI Grade A, RP Assistant, IBPS AF4. And uh, we also offer a QRE course, Quant Reasoning and English course for all banking exams. So friends, now uh, what are we going to do today? So today is a very important lecture that we are going to discuss. So in this coming, uh, this complete week is going to be dedicated to the questions that are taken from Nabat's Model Bank Cable Projects. Now friends, let me first tell you the significance. Why are we actually discussing these questions? Now friends, when we analyzed the previous year paper, we found that there were many direct questions that were asked from these model bankable projects. Now these projects can be found on Nabat's website. Okay, now what are these projects? See, what happens is Nabat usually has a responsibility of giving out loans for the development of the rural sector, right? So Nabat usually grants loan to banks and banks in turn gives loans to the farmers or maybe self-help groups and etc. Now, we are not going to go into the details of this. I'm just giving you an overview so that you can understand the concept behind these model bankable projects. So what happens is in order for these recipients to avail loans or subsidies, whatever the criteria may be, they need to actually follow certain guidelines that have been set by NABAD. Okay, so only if they follow those guidelines, will NABAD actually sanction the loans for them. Okay, so now these guidelines are actually released in the form of model bankable projects. Now these projects are undertaken under various headings, under various themes like maybe the project may be horticulture project, it may be animal husbandry project, right? So it may be many projects. So if you go to Nabat's website, you can actually have a look. If you see there are more than 25 to 50 project reports that are mentioned. But do we need to go to that report and learn it line by line? line no that is not the case there are important parameters that we need to study and in the previous year paper there were exact questions taken from these reports okay so that is why we are going to pick only those questions that are required for our examination and kindly memorize those questions in phase one there is a great possibility of getting more number of questions from such model bankable projects now today we are going to be discussing six questions now, these six questions have been taken specifically from this model bankable project report that is model scheme on solar photovoltaic pumping system. Okay. Now, this is a kind of a project for those farmers without pump sets. Okay. So just understand a very broad overview. You do not need to go into the concepts that is not at all required. Okay. So what they're going to do is they're going to provide fund for solar pumps. So that is as simple as it can be. So now uh, just an overview. Uh, we know that solar energy can be used in two ways. 
okay one is solar thermal technology and the other is solar photovoltaic systems that is spv systems and now why are we actually reading this because in n number of places you're going to come across with this term spv so you need to have an overview as to what does it mean so when we say st technology you can just read this definition it is a technology where the heat produced is used to operate devices for heating cooling drying water purification and power generation okay so the devices can be solar water heaters solar cookers or solar dryers now what are we going to study we are going to see the questions based on spv systems this system actually converts the sunlight into electricity for use applications such as lighting pumping communication and refrigeration now in this project it is talking about pumping okay so basically electricity is used to pump water okay and here what they have replaced electricity with they have replaced it by using solar energy and we are using a system where this sunlight gets converted ultimately into electricity okay now here you can see what is meant by photovoltaic power generation now kindly pause the video have a look at this paragraph there are not going to be any questions out of it but in order to appreciate the questions well if you just go through it it will actually help you in retaining whatever questions we are discussing today and here we have just given a tabular column as to what are the components of the solar photovoltaic pumping system you do not need to memorize the components just have an idea that when we talk about the pumping system it consists of an spv module an array tracking structure a pump set a mounting structure cable and wire controller suction and delivery pipes so just uh, for us it is important to know the term spv module rest of the thing and pump set okay rest of the thing are just periphery so don't go into the details of it now uh, let us start with these questions now friends before we start the discussion uh, one thing i would like to tell you is kindly make sure that even if you're not able to understand certain things kindly memorize it you know because such kind of questions can fetch you easy marks so it is important for you to have at the back of your mind that though you're not able to understand certain technical things it is okay just go ahead and memorize the answers for it okay now these questions that we are going to discuss can be mapped to two of the topics that are given in our syllabus that is water resources farm and agri engineering okay why water resources because these pump sets are basically used for irrigation and that's why uh, under uh, there's a topic irrigation under water resources so we can map it to that particular topic the second thing why farm and agri engineering because we are talking about pump sets right so mechanical concepts so again it comes into this topic right now let us start the question number 1 says a solar cell behaves like a low voltage battery whose charge is continuously replenished at a rate which is proportional to the incident solar radiation connecting such cells into series of parallel configuration resulting in photovoltaic modules or solar arrays with high current and voltages okay now the power developed by a solar array ranges from so this is the question that can be asked so you need to memorize this power that actually gets developed by the solar arrays now these solar arrays are actually used in the solar photovoltaic cells okay so here the answer is 80 to 120 watts per square meter of the panel okay so basically there are solar panels that are deployed and these panels are made up of solar cells or solar arrays okay so they produce the power which ranges from 80 to 120 watts per square meter of the panel okay kindly memorize this very important now here the same thing is given in word format so just pause the video have a look at this explanation and try to understand if you're not able to understand kindly just memorize this power which is produced by the solar array now let us come to the question number 2 so this says the discharge of a solar pump 
with array area of 2 to 4 meter varies between what at a head of 15 to 50 meter. Now, don't get confused. What are we just asking in this question? We are asking what is the discharge rate? So that is the question. Now, what is a discharge rate? That is per second. How much liter or how many, sorry, how many liters of water is pumped out using this solar pump? Okay, and you can memorize the other technicalities. The array area varies from 2 to 4 meter. Okay, so the answer is 6 to 8 liter per second. I understand that it may be a little bit of confusing, but uh, make sure that you spend ample amount of time, at least give 10 minutes and make sure that these things are registered at the back of your mind. Again, the same thing is mentioned here. Now, one more important point, whatever parameters that we have discussed, using that, we can irrigate about 1.5 to 4 hectares of land with crops having moderate irrigation requirements or may provide protective irrigation to even a larger command. So basically, if we are using a discharge, if, if sorry, if you're using a solar pump, which has an array area of two to four meter, okay, and it is at a head of 15 to 50 meter, okay, now this is the height that they have given. Okay, and it has a discharge rate of 6 to 8 liter per second, then it can help us irrigate a land which has a dimension of 1.5 to 4 hectares. Okay. Now let us discuss question number 3. This says the SPV based pump sets are low head high discharge and may be productively used at sites where water is available at what? Okay, so basically when we talk about water availability here, we are talking about the ground water availability because obviously we are going to use those solar pump sets to extract water from the ground. Okay, so the ground water level is being talked about here. So they are saying if the level of the water is shallow to moderate, then these kind of pump sets are effective. Okay, so the answer to this question is shallow to moderate depth. Again, the same thing is mentioned here. And what are the possible water sources for these SPV systems? They can be pits, they can be pen dug wells, they can be medium tube wells, tanks, farm ponds, surface water and etc. So not only we are talking about the groundwater, we are also talking about extracting water from other sources, right? So previously I had mentioned that we are specifically talking about groundwater. It is not the case. We are talking about a scenario where the source of water can be all this that we have mentioned in this particular section. So if that of the water level in these sources is from shallow to moderate, then these SPV pump sets can be used. Now coming to the fourth question. So what is the minimum area of land to be brought under irrigation to ensure viability of investment in dug well with SPV? So now what do you see in this question? Basically, we are asking how much land needs to be irrigated so that the investment becomes effective. Okay, so here we are talking about dug well. Just keep this in mind when we see two more questions, you would understand why we are asking you to keep this dug well in mind over here. Okay, so the answer to this question is one hectare. Now, see, this is a very, very important part that you need to memorize. So it is necessary that the beneficiary here, we are referring to a farmer, for example, who is seeking loan, have the following minimum area of land to be brought under irrigation to ensure the viability of investments. OK, so now when we talk about dug well, bow well, shallow tube wells, these are the source of water that we are talking about. OK, these are the type of structures that are available with the farmers. 
so here if you see this is a very important data so if the structure or the source of water is dug well okay then one hectare of land should be available this is a minimum area that needs to be under irrigation okay so if the structure that is available as a source of water is bore well then what is going to be the minimum area of land that should be available under irrigation it is 1.6 hectares and if it is shallow tube wells it should be 2 hectares it is going to be a bit of tough for you to actually make sense and understand but kindly do so because it is going to benefit you in terms of marks next comes the fifth question now we were discussing the various structures that are available with farmers plus the corresponding minimum area of plant that is required to be under irrigation right now had you paid attention to the discussion of the previous question this is the direct answer so what is the minimum area of land to be brought under irrigation to ensure viability of investment in bore well so here we are talking about bore well the previous question we had dealt was regarding dug well right so the answer to this question is 1.6 hectares now you may ask me why we are not going to go into the details of it because that is not at all required for us these are certain technical parameters that nabad has mentioned in its report and we have to memorize it again we can see the same data that we had discussed earlier Now coming to question number 6, so what is the minimum area of land to be brought under irrigation to ensure viability of investment in shallow tube well with SPV? So again the structure is changed here, we had discussed dug well, we had discussed bore well, now we have come to shallow tube well. Now the answer to this question is 2 hectares, kindly memorize this. Again, the same parameters mentioned here, you can revise it. So here you can have a look at the answers of the questions that we have discussed. So friends, if you have any queries, you can drop us a mail at hello at the rate edutab.co.in. You can give us a call on 8146207241. You can go to our website if you want to have a look at the course features, www.edutab.co.in. So till then friends, thank you so much for watching and as usual, happy learning.